DIYers, what's going on? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking boats today. And in today's project, we are going to show you how to replace your trim limit and trim sender switches. Let's get started. Let's head to the left side where we have our schematics of the bell housing, the bellows, the gimbal ring, and the transom. Following all of that to a T, this came from our exact serial number service manual. Outside at the boat, this is a 1989 glass port with a Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1 3.0 liter. Let's head to the back and get started. To the back of the boat, and as you can see, our outdrive has already been removed. Scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows the removal process of our outdrive. Coming to the port side, as you see here, this is the trim limit switch right here. And our wiring is completely destroyed, damaged, and no longer connected. Let's hop to the starboard side. This is the trim sender, and the wiring is still in decent condition and connected to the sender. However, again, we are going to replace both the port side limit switch and the starboard side sender. To the starboard side, we are going to remove the trim sender and two Phillips screws, one on top, one on bottom. And again, Phillips screwdriver, if your screws are on there tight and not budging, go ahead and carefully tap the base of your screwdriver with a hammer as you simultaneously loosen the screw. And in our case, ours are loose. And again, take photos prior to removing your trim sender and limit switch. From here, you can carefully remove your trim sender. And the back side is very greasy. Just be careful as you shift this down and out of the way. And inside here is your hinge pin. I'll clean away all that grease to give you a better view of it. a close-up of the hinge pin and you've got one on the starboard side as well as the port side and there is a specific tool designed to remove your hinge pins we'll show you that now and DIYers here it is down below in the comment section as well as description section is a link to purchase this this is a must-have tool when removing your hinge pins and as you can see one side has a machine spline cut to it to perfectly match your hinge pins and on the opposite side is a half inch stud for a half inch socket and carefully align the hinge pin tool inside the hinge pin without cross threading or damaging the spline port side now and DIYers again here's our limit switch and the wiring is completely disconnected not good Phillips screw on top Fill it screw on bottom, go ahead and loosen those. From here, carefully remove the limit switch. And again, in our case, it's completely disconnected and we'll remove that all together. Next, I'll just clean all that grease off there. All right, DIYers, hey, a quick break in the action. At this point, I'm not going to bore you with the entire removal process of the bell housing, the bellows, which include the U-joint bellow, shift cable bellow, exhaust bellow, as well as the water tube. And the reason for that is because this specific video is geared and tailored directly for replacing the trim limit switch as well as the trim sender switch. However, in the event that you want to see all of that, scrolling above right now is a helpful video link that shows everything, including all the items I just mentioned. Again, the bell housing, U-joint bellow, exhaust Bella, water tube, shift cable bellow, shift cable, and much more. And with that said, in the event that you are more interested in the full project that shows everything, again, take a look at that video link. You will hopefully find it very helpful. However, back to this video, what I will do in this video is show you a quick view of us cutting the bellows with our Craftsman utility knife, so you will at least have a view of how we cut through all the bellows and remove the bell housing. Let's take a look at that now. As you see here, and just cut all the way through. Now to the opposite side, and again, I'm just cutting the entire bellow. There we go. And we will pull this entire bell housing out and set it in a safe location. Now to another close-up in DIYers. This is what I'm worried about. All that insulation inside my exhaust. And from what I can tell, there were no holes in the actual exhaust bellow. So unfortunately, we need to go back up top after we clean that exhaust portion out and figure out how critters got inside the exhaust. We were making progress. I have removed as much of that insulation that I can get a hold of, and there was a lot. And unfortunately, it continues inward and up the exhaust pipe that is inside the inboard engine, or in other words, on the inner portion of the hull. And here is the Craftsman shop vac I'll be using. At this 
point I'm done vacuuming. I spent about a minute and a half vacuuming. I inserted that hose as far into the exhaust system as possible. And surprisingly, quite a lot went in, so. And there we go. Now to the inside of the vacuum and not much, and that's a good thing, that's what we were hoping. We believe that lump sum that we took out just a bit ago was the bulk of it. And hopefully what's inside this vacuum right there is the last of it. However, again, we are going to run an endoscope through the exhaust system. I have installed a brand new gimbal bearing grease seal, which is behind that gimbal bearing and a brand new sealed gimbal bearing as shown here. And we're going to come up top. And as you can see, there are two bolts and two wires and a connection cover. We'll match the bolts to a socket and loosen those up. At this point, the right tool goes a long way. As you can see, I've got an adjustable adapter into a 7 16th socket and my 3 8 ratchet. And this part right here converts a 3 8 into a quarter where I can get into my little adapter that's a quarter inch. I'm going to start by removing the bottom bolt closest to the gimbal bearing. And as you maneuver this into the area and onto that bolt, get a good grip of it because the last thing you want to do is strip that bolt and not be able to get it out. And just a heads up, your new trim sender and limit switch kit does not come with replacement bolts. You will have to order those separately. And I'm on, I'm going to use my right hand and finger as well as thumb to push on the top portion of the ratchet as well as ensure that the socket does not fall off that bolt as I turn it. And it's tight. But it's moving. That's good. As you unscrew that, you can carefully move your gimbal ring to give you better access to that bolt, as well as switch to the smaller quarter inch so you don't jam the ratchet and socket and adapter in place between the bolt and gimbal ring. It is now loose to a point where I can unscrew the bolt by hand. And the bolt itself is just shy of an inch. Let's take a closer look inside now. Coming inside and there is the hole that the bolt came out of in DIYers. Above that again, a second bolt. And for all of you Alpha 1 Gen 1s, including ourselves, you have that second bolt. In the event that you have an Alpha 1 Gen 2 or any of the Bravos, you are lucky you do not have that second bolt. And as time went on, the manufacturers must have decided that adding that second bolt way up top was very inconvenient and a problem when it came time to servicing this portion of the engine and installing new wiring. So it's possible that they changed the design Design. However, again, we've got an Alpha 1 Gen 1 and we've got that upper bolt. We need to remove it. And again, Alpha 1 Gen 1 owners, just be patient. This is a very annoying and difficult step of the project. I'm coming in between the transom and gimbal ring. I've got my 7 16 wrench. Really, it's the only thing I can get up onto that upper bolt up there. And again, just be patient. This is not easy. And a quick update, as you can see, I am making progress by loosening up that bolt. And again, be patient. It is not easy. It's extremely annoying and a very tight space to work with. And again, the wrench is really the only tool we can use. If you try to get a socket in there, you'll end up jamming it. And that's not good. And at this point, I'm going to grab my pick tool. And I might just be able to loosen up. There we go. And from here, what I want to do is position the camera and show you how I am maneuvering my hand and fingers onto that bolt to unscrew it. I'm using my right hand, thumb, and first finger. I'm going to position it in like this and go up, in, and hopefully you can get your hand, thumb, and finger in there. And I've got a hold of the bolt. And again, I'm just going to hand loosen it from here. And it is out. There it is. Set that aside. And I'll continue pulling the plate out and down the wiring, just like that. And again, when it comes time to reinstall this securing clip or plate, the slit has to be basically on the left side at the 10 o'clock. Now to a view of the plate removed from that area, and I'm going to reach my hand up in here, grab both wires, and you'll notice this little rubber boot that serves the purpose of creating a watertight seal. I'll carefully pull that out. 
there's one side and that side's pretty tough. I don't want to yank it. So I'm going to leave it as is. As you can see, there are two halves that create that rubber grommet or seal that goes inside that hole. Let's go inside the boat and check it out. Inside the boat now, where we've got our inboard engine, let's go to the back. And I'm looking at this wire right here that feeds through the transom and hull. And this is the wire to the trim sender. And in regards to our trim limit wiring, it comes in. Not sure if you can see it. There it is right there. And it makes a 90 degree angle turn, feeds upstream and a zip tie there, and then feeds all the way to that unit there. And there are the two connections. That is the wire right there. And as far as the trim sender wiring, again, right there, and it feeds upstream and makes a couple loops around this larger wiring harness that's taped together and finally makes its way inside to this connection point right here. And I'm pulling the two wires out of the four that are right there, as you can see. To the opposite side, and there is the trim hydraulic motor and reservoir and the solenoid wiring, etc. However, coming inside here, at this point I recommend taking several photos to ensure when it comes time to re-secure the wiring, you know which ones go in. And again, here is the wiring. Be extra careful as you do this. The last thing you want to do is cut a wire. That would not be good. With that cut, I will remove the wiring. I'm also going to reinsert that red cable there. And again, that feeds all the way to these two connections right here. Outside the boat and to the back of the boat. And what I'm going to do now, and obviously you want to ensure that your battery is not connected. Our battery is not even installed in the boat. I'm going to snip the wiring. And again, this was the trim sender starboard side. I'll remove the clip. And this is now junk. I'm going to take this opportunity while we're on this side to disconnect the fittings for the wiring and one goes into a double green wire harness and the other one goes into a purple wire harness. When it comes time to re-secure everything it does not matter which connection point goes into which one and we have verified that with our exact serial number service manual. So disconnect those and that is what they look like. What I'm going to do next is clip these off. As shown there and again here is the opposite end of our wiring i am now going to tape a string trimmer or weed whacker line to it and to an update i wrapped about six inches of string trimmer line and gray line into orange electrical tape and again that trimmer line goes all the way up about six inches the last thing i want this doing is coming disconnected as i pull it downstream and out of the back of the boat let's hop to the opposite side i'm going to switch colors and do the same thing as here to the opposite side and again the starboard side wiring feeds into those two screws and mounting points and i'm going to carefully unscrew those again this is a good time to take photos or video as you want to ensure when it comes time to re-secure the new wiring you secure it properly bottom screw is now removed and a good time again to take photos or videos to ensure that you know how it came apart and what was connected to that screw tuple is removed and that part right there Make sure you don't drop that in the engine and the way that goes on is that bulky block portion at the bottom will be on the bottom and that rusted screw in our case on the bottom will go into that bulky block bottom portion and in our case both wire connections again one on the top screw one on the bottom screw each of these were the first connections that went on the screw or mount and then there were two additional wires that went on these one on each one in other words our trim sender wiring connections were positioned on the inner portion closest to this mount here and just like the opposite side, I am going to cut those connection parts off. Taking a step back, what I did next was, again, grab the string trimmer or weed whacker line, and I used white electrical tape. We are going to color code the trim sender differently than the limit switch, just to ensure we don't get them goofed up as we pull them out and pull the new wiring in. What we'll do now is go to the back of the boat and pull the wiring through. And a quick tip before we pull that wiring through, what I've done was tied each trimmer wire to something secured to alleviate me pulling it all the way through, as shown there. To the back of the boat and inside the transom, and now that I have clipped that zip tie that made it difficult to pull the trim limit switch wiring, I can pull these out. And I'll set the trim limit to the side, and I am going to pull out the trim sender switch, which is starboard, and again, the electrical tape should be white when it comes through. There it is. 
I will set that right there. Now to the trim limit wiring. And again, I tied the back side to ensure that I don't actually pull the string trimmer line all the way out during this stage of the project. And again, the trim limit switch should be orange. And it gets a little tough as it gets through that small hole. And there it is. As you can see here, trim center, starboard side, trim limit, port side. And I'll pull this out just a little bit. Next, I cut a small, about a half an inch size electrical tape, both orange and white. I'm going to add that to the port side trimmer cable, as shown here. And I'll do that as well to the trim sender switch wiring, as shown here. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'll feed that back in just a little bit. Again, white for trim sender, orange for trim limit. I'm now going to cut these away. And again, from here, I'm still organized. I've got the white for the trim sender or starboard side and the orange for the trim limit or port side. From here, I'll go grab the new wiring and tape it to this end of the trimmer wire. Back inside to the workstation, here is the brand new trim limit sender and wiring kit. It comes with three additional accessories, two wiring adapters, and this little clip right here. That will secure the trim limit wiring to your water tube or hose. And in this video, we will not be doing that because we are not at that stage yet. Your kit also comes with instructions. I recommend reading those. And we will need these two adapters when it comes time to securing the wiring back to the engine where that mount is. Let's head back out to the boat. Back in the garage to the back of the boat. And as you can see, we have taped, again, color-coded, orange for trim limit, white for trim sender, onto their respective string trimmer line. And we are going to carefully pull it from the inside of the boat through that hole right there. And again, I did about six to seven, maybe eight inches of tape to ensure that it does not come disconnected. In addition, the new cable has those connections we cannot cut off. So it is a little bit of larger diameter or bulge on the top portion there, because again, those connections. We are now back outside the boat, and now that we have pulled the wiring through, I want to talk about these two pieces. Again, in the old wiring kit, they were black, but with the new kit, they're white, and Mercruiser calls these halves. And the way they work, again, each wire has a half of this fitting, and when secured inside that hole up above, it will go in as shown right here, and it will create a watertight seal. However, before moving on, I want to show you the gap in between each of the halves and the pre-installed from the manufacturer protector here. You've got a small gap, and what is that for? To insert this clip. Make sure you insert it properly, and trim center will go in first, as shown here, and trim limit will go in second. And once they're through, again, when you screw this in tight, it's going to create that watertight seal. Now let's go back in the boat and unwrap the wiring and remove all that electrical tape. Back inside the boat and to the port side, I have removed the orange electrical tape that I used to pull the trim limit wiring through. And again, here's the connections. And per our service manual, again, it does not matter which connection goes into which fitting, but you want them secured. As shown there. They should make a clicking sound. Now to the starboard side, trim center wiring, I have removed the white electrical tape and that is where these fittings or adapters come into play. And I will start with this one, secure that into place, and again, it should make a clicking feeling or sound. And the second one. Really push them in there, but don't damage them. To the back of the boat, and unfortunately, an annoying and tricky part. What we have to do is feed that wiring up to that hole, properly center the two halves together, and secure this plate with those two bolts. And just be patient and careful as you do this. And again, as I shift those two halves up and into that hole, I wanna make sure that they are aligned properly, and I will secure the lower bolt first. DIYs, the bottom bolt is pretty easy, again, with that adapter. Quick update DORs, I have got the top bolt in its early stages of being threaded in. And the way I did this was grab the bolt with these two fingers and basically pinch it, 
shift it up into place and I use the back portion of my fingers to push that cover plate that we secure with the bolts inward toward the boat just to get it as close to that threaded hole as possible. So then I could insert the bolt and just kind of feel around for about five to 10 seconds until it fell into place inside that threaded hole. And from there, I just use my two fingers to again, carefully without cross threading it, turn it clockwise into the thread. And after that, back to my 7 16 inch wrench and it is working very nice. Coming back inside and I am making progress. One thing I want to show you is there is a gap in between the cover plate and transom and it's getting pretty tough right now because we have tension on that inner two halves. And as you tighten these bolts, do them in sequence, meaning maybe three to five turns on the top one, come down to the bottom one, three to five turns, and that's going to help properly center the two halves as you secure the plate and create that watertight seal. And another update, DIYers, it took me every bit of 30 to 40 minutes to secure both of those bolts, again, 7 16 in our case, ultimately securing that plate and pushing those two halves in place in that inner hole to create that watertight seal. And you can see braided wire, which will go inside the transom and bell housing area. And that is to protect the wiring as the outdrive engine is trimming up and down while it's out in the water and in use. Taking a step back, before we hop into the boat and secure the opposite side wiring, I do want to talk about those screws. And depending on what service manual you follow, will depend on whether or not it mentions to add or apply Perfect Seal or Gasket Maker to those bolt threads. In our case, our service manual did not call for it, but again, not a bad idea, but we chose not to do it because that stuff is extremely sticky and it can make a mess really quick if you're not careful. Again, we chose not to do it because our service manual did not call for it. Back inside the boat to the port side trim limit wiring. And I've used zip ties to resecure everything. I cleaned it up just a little bit. I tied it to the back frame of the hydraulic pump in a much more organized manner. And leave a little bit of play in your zip ties so you can move your wiring pretty easily. Now let's hop to the starboard side. Starboard side and I resecure the electrical wiring and connection points, as well as ensuring that the trim sender wire connection points were the first to go on to mate flush with that block, as the old ones were like that. In addition, spend a couple minutes and use zip ties to organize the wiring to ensure that the wiring is not loose and dangling, nor is it touching the hot engine at all while we're out having fun on the water. Back outside of the boat, and one last view of the finished product but it's not 100% finished because we still have to do the adjustment. However, we don't have the outdrive installed on the boat, so we can't do it yet. Scrolling above right now is a video that takes you right to the point in the project where the outdrive is already connected to the boat and we begin the full adjustment and alignment of your trim limit switch and trim center switch. As you can see here, trim limit port side and Trim sender should say starboard, as you see there. So DIYers, we really hope this helped, and we hope to see you at that next video that was scrolling above just a bit ago, so we can show you how to properly and safely adjust and align your switches to your outdrive. Again, we hope to see you there. Do us a favor below the video. You will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.